This is my tray of uh, peas and tomatoes. And the tomatoes got a little bit battered by the rain earlier. They're all kind of leaning over uh, and they're all getting tall. So I'm gonna go and cut some bamboos and stake them and tie them up so that they can grow tall and strong and produce lots of lovely fruit for me. I'm off to cut some bamboo for the tomatoes. But this is lovely. This bed is uh, full of poppies and uh, gunnera, bluebells. There's a wisteria that hasn't come out yet. There's, there's the roots of the wisteria. But this here is my favorite late flowering wood anemone. And it's absolutely beautiful with its delicate white and its fluffy face. I love these. And I got one tiny plant that was about the size of that one over there. And it's spread to about that much, but it's taken years and years and years to spread that much. So I really love it. It's a beautiful white little wood anemone that other gardeners have, oh, Inca. You're going to stomp all over my beautiful wood anemone. No, you're going over. Those are the um, crocus leaves. So she's climbing up probably to go and hunt for mice or voles in the root structure of the um, wisteria, which you can see there's the wisteria. It's not flowering yet because it's this is in a more sheltered location. But ferns are coming up. There's two different kinds of ferns here. There's this kind and that flat-leafed kind, and they're unfurling. They're so beautiful ferns when they're unfurling. They're fiddleheads, so gorgeous. Anyway, there's Inca on the pursuit of voles. So I'm gonna go and cut some bamboo now for the um, tomatoes to start staking them because they're beginning to flop over. So here's the bamboo grove. I'm not sure if it was planted by my great-grandfather or my great-great-grandfather because I know it was here when my grandfather was a boy because the hundred-year die-off happened when my great-uncle Gilbert knew about it or had heard about it. So bamboo die off every hundred years. And just when I came home 20 years ago, it had done its die off. So we nearly lost our stand, but this has grown back over the last 20 years. It's a big, very big bam bamboo grove. And so this is what we use to stake off our tomatoes and beans and all kinds of things. So I'm gonna chop some of this and go and stake up my baby tomatoes. On the ground beneath my feet, two puppies, Inca, and then sweet old pepper. As I quietly stand here and slowly tie these tomatoes to these bamboo stakes. Now this is all temporary because I don't have a greenhouse. So I have to bring the tomatoes in and out every single day. I have to bring the lettuces in and out and the peas and everything. So they're coming in and out every day. So these are not the permanent stakes. These are only temporary to allow the tomatoes to continue on their upward projectile. Uh, I didn't get enough bamboo. I only got one stem, thought that would do me. So I need to go out and chop another one to finish these last two. You can see how it's leaning all the way over. And partially, they're writing themselves as the sun warms them. But I think I want to get um, stakes onto them so that they don't flop around. You can see in the wind how the ones that are staked are lovely and stationary, whereas these fellows are gonna rock themselves out of their bedding or who knows what'll happen. So I'm gonna go get one more stake. And uh, this is my gardening companions, two puppies chewing stands, a sleeping elderly dog, 
and a vigilant Inca looking for other events that are occurring in the yard. What are you? Yeah, you're chewing stones. That's exactly what you're doing. You're such good gardening dogs. Chewing stones. Isn't that right, Maya? Clever pup. An old pepper. So we're going to walk back out to the bamboo patch now to finish this morning's job.